Welcome back to the lab. Not to throw myself under the bus or anything, but today we're going to talk about something that was literally an afterthought on our old UPS. It turns out, it's a pretty critical part of the system. That's right, we're talking about cooling. Specifically the fan control and monitoring circuits. On the old UPS design, this circuit was literally a PMP transistor, and our cooling strategy was throw down a bunch of fan headers and we'll figure out the rest later. Yikes. All the tachometer inputs came into the microcontroller on dedicated pins, and our microcontroller sampled the tach pins to ensure it was changing state. There are more advanced ways to do frequency counting with a microcontroller, but we were shooting for easy with just a dash of universally compatible. I didn't want to rely on a hardware timer counter to implement this function. Needless to say, this was bad. It was a bad implementation for a lot of reasons, and I feel bad for it. Let's fix that. One of the big questions is, how can we possibly detect a failure in our cooling fan? This is important for our UPS because I don't want to be adding fans for fun. We need the cooling effect. That's why we're adding the fans. For computer fans, a tachometer signal is actually built into each and every single fan you can buy. This either provides one or two pulses per revolution, which in turn translates into some amount of revolutions per minute. Awesome, right? The signal is open collector, which means that it's shorted to ground either once or twice a revolution. So all we need to do to interpret this is provide a pull-up resistor. Without an external pull-up resistor, the tachometer output will measure zero volts all the time. That's no good. This open collector signal is what the microcontroller was pulling. Turns out that wastes a lot of memory and processor power to pull the fan state about 100 times a second, so there has got to be a better way. Right? There, there has to be. Actually, yes. There's a few interesting types of components that I found. First of all, fully integrated solutions for fan control and temperature monitoring. One great example is the ADT7470 from Analog Devices. This thing is smoking. It is awesome. It can do closed loop speed control of four fans, monitor up to 10 temperature sensors, and connects with the host over I2C or SM bus. This chip leaves nothing to be desired. It is a one-stop solution that will kill this ant with a sledgehammer. My only beef with this thing is, well, the price. This controller costs $6 in small quantities, and I don't really need this level of control. It's basically the cost of another microcontroller. Actually, I can buy microcontrollers for less than that. Taking a step back then, there's a TI fan controller that seems pretty nice too. The LM63 is great. It can drive and interpret one silicon junction based temperature sensor, provides an alert to the host if something goes wrong, and also does closed loop control of a fan. This allows for programming eight different speed levels, which will then be triggered automatically based on the link temperature sensor, less pins for a microcontroller, and probably better control. That's great, but it's also kind of overkill. We don't really need closed loop control of these fans. And while it saves some work with regards to temperature control, since it'll be triggered by that temperature sensor automatically, it adds some work because we're going to need to implement SM bus or I squared C, some custom protocol to connect our microcontroller with this fan controller. Learning and establishing yet another protocol doesn't sound like fun to me, but then again, I am kind of an analog guy. In TI's defense, the cost did come down to a more reasonable place. This is only $350 for one of these controllers. Not bad. Which brings us to the solution I would like to move forward with. The TC670 fan failure detector. This thing is dead simple. It just counts the frequency on the input and translates that into a did the fan fail or not type of signal. Basically the microcontroller will get triggered whenever a fan speed falls too low. This leaves the microcontroller to implement PWM control or not and respond to the fan too slow error or not. All it does is monitor and provide a simple digital logic signal when the fan speed is below a fixed threshold. This fan failure monitor doesn't actually control the fan at all. It's actually only designed to count those tachometer pulses. A resistor divider programs the speed that will trigger an alert and an acknowledge input clears that alert. Simple as that. This allows for setting a threshold, say 1000 RPM, and knowing whenever a fan falls beneath that threshold. Essentially, it's just stall detection. This is exactly what we implemented in software, but we get a hardware interrupt pin instead of needing to sample and interpret an otherwise unnecessary analog input. These ICs cost around a buck 25, and this leaves the control portion up to software. Speaking of, I think that what we did is very clever. Basically, there's two types of fans, three pin and four pin. The difference between these two fans is simple. 
four pin fans allowed for direct PWM control, but three pin fans aren't meant for that kind of variable speed control. Not to say that one can't control a three pin fan with PWM, it's just your mileage may vary. The primary control mechanism for these fans is regular PWM with simple on off control with a microcontroller pin. However, if you'd like to utilize the four pin fan functionality, simply short the two pin jumper and you'll be in business. This makes the control signal for the PMOS transistor irrelevant, forcing power to be permanently enabled to that fan, and it allows the control signal to serve as PWM control for the four pin fan. One pin to control either three or four pin fans. All I have to do is set a jumper to match what you want to do. Needless to say, I think this circuit's pretty clever, but I'm pretty biased too. The cost comes out to around $2 per fan, all told, and this enables use of either three or four pin fans while reducing software complexity considerably. Fan control and monitoring as a sub-circuit or a subsystem is relatively simple in theory, but it's also really easy to gloss over some important details and make silly mistakes. I thought it was important to make sure this design was flexible because the goal is to copy it for every daughter card. If it doesn't actually work, we'll be in a world of hurt, so even though it's simple, I probably want to prototype this just to make sure that it works. If you like what you saw today, consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we will design the 24 volt buck converter that provides backup power for the digital systems in the UPS when mains has failed. We'll follow that up by designing the mechanism for switching over to backup power when required. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. Really helps us out a lot. Thanks. I think this fan controller is great. If you think so too, let me know by hitting the like button on this video, following us on Twitter, or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!